to cut it with a hammer. In today's episode, I'm going to compare the differences between a sliding table saw and a traditional table saw. Since I don't have my original table saw anymore, I've locked this one up to help us out. We'll see how it works. So let's get started. Before we get started on the actual comparisons, we'll talk a little bit about uh, cost and delivery time. A sliding table saw in general is not a commodity item. It means you can't go down the store and pick one up like you can, like a stop saw or any other saw, unless or have it ordered and delivered within a week or so. Um, with exception of, with a few exceptions. Um, they are custom made. To give them the features that you want, the factory makes it, and they ship it to you. And if the factory is not in America, then it's got it across the ocean, which is which is good for three or four weeks. That said, the advantage goes to the traditional table saw because the delivery time is going to be rather short. You can go down, you can perhaps get it the same day. You go down to your local uh, woodcraft store have one in stock, you throw it in the back of your truck, and you bring it home. It's quite easily done. Even though Grizzly and Felder have pre-configured saws, uh, I think Grizzlies are mostly pre-configured, but I couldn't swear to that, um, they're still going to take some time to get the two. I'm not sure what they have on stock, uh, Felder has on stock in the U.S. They might have something that could get it to you in a week or so. But uh, I couldn't, since I custom ordered mine, I really can't address that. And so someone else who has done that may be able to tell me. So with that said, being a custom saw and the fact that you always have to call for a quote, which traditionally means it's going to cost you more, not always, but usually, uh, the sliding table saw is also going to cost you a little bit more. Um, maybe in a standard configuration, maybe 20%. If you're going something completely customized with a lot of bigger extras, then it's going to be a lot more. Um, but both the delivery time and the cost, in my opinion, is a one-time cost to you, uh, both in time and money. Once you have the saw and after you've had it a couple years, the cost is somewhat irrelevant and the delivery time is somewhat irrelevant um, in your day-to-day -day activities with the saw. I will say a slider saw does take a larger amount of space in your shop. Um, you can get shorter sliders uh, with, without an outrigger, so that would take up a much smaller footprint, almost comparable to what you would get like with a stop saw or a traditional saw. But, um, it all depends on what you order for options. Uh, for me, this saw definitely takes up a fair amount more space than my old saw, which I'll be a picture up here. Um, so again, the traditional saw is generally going to take up less space, but there's reasons for that. When we'll get to those hopefully a little bit later in the video. In general, unless you're going with a really small slider, uh, your miters are going to be bigger even without the outfade or the outrigger uh, and the traditional miter being down here, it's still going to be like 50 inches, the miter bar. So definitely a much more substantial miter than what you would get with a traditional saw. And here on this mock-up, I have my old uh, Anchor 1000 SC, uh, a very nice miter. I did have to do some adjustments to it when I got it, like with almost all the tools you buy. Um, but I was pretty happy with it. it. I got accurate cuts out of it. I'm pretty, pretty satisfied with that. The one problem was when I was doing longer pieces, uh, even this, though it extends out, it really wasn't, um, I didn't feel comfortable going too far out with a like longer piece. Like I couldn't do like a, a four foot board that was 13 inches thick, for example. There was just no way to do it because to get 13 inches, you would have to come off the end of the table and then there's no support. So that makes it difficult. And then there's just really not much support. Even if you add a 
uh, and one extension wing, there's not a whole lot of support out to the left of the table. So as opposed to a slider, uh, you can get outfits, you can get uh, supports besides an outrigger that come out to the side of the table, and you can get a pretty good um, sized piece of wood on this. And then you can clamp the piece of wood to the sliding table where that is not really doable with something like this. You could do a cross-cut sled for a really large piece, but that's essentially what the sliding table gives you is that sliding ability that a sled gives you. And then, of course, on a, slide, a sled, you can clamp your wood on the sled. So, but then you sacrifice at least a half inch to three quarter inch of your blade height because you have the sled, and then you're pushing the sled across the top of your table, which is friction, especially if you have a heavier piece. And I know people are gonna argue this says you can wax the top of your table and you can wax the bottom of the sled, but to be honest with you, it's no, no comparison to the ease of being able to move a heavy piece of wood on slider. There's just, sorry, slider wins on that one. As it should, I mean, that was the whole design, is to uh, move your entire piece of wood on a fixed surface past the blade. We're going to use a T-square to represent the fence. And I would say that on the, even on my old uh, Craftsman table saw, I would say that once I got the aftermarket fence on it, the setting up the fence to the proper width was fairly easy. I might even go as far and say it was easier on this than perhaps on this. Um, but there's some advantages to this style of uh, fence. The ability to pull it back so it doesn't pinch your wood between the blade and the fence is a big bonus. You could clamp a shorter piece of wood to this and run it past your blade and you get the same thing, but at that point, your measurement is going to be off um, on your fence measurements, whereas here it's going to be it's the same. So I'm not going to say that one's that much better than the other. As far as safety, there is a riving knife on the back of this that the uh, test collection is mounted onto, and your if you're going out and buy a new uh, traditional table saw, it's also going to come with a riving knife and dust collection, so it's kind of a wash there. As far as safety is concerned, on a slider table, I operate here, well to the left of the blade. This is 14 inches, roughly. Um, so I'm here almost two feet away from the blade, and I can easily slide my piece of wood past the blade without getting anywhere near the blade. Whereas over here, I'm using my left hand or my right hand. If I'm using my right hand, I'm probably getting a little bit out of the way of kickback, but I'm still pretty close to the blade. Um, here, what, less than a hand's width between the blade and my hand. It's just, you're just closer. And if I'm pushing wood through to do a rip cut, then I'm standing right behind the, in front of the blade and then pushing wood through. Now I can, if I was left handed, if I could use my left hand, it would be a little bit safer, but most people are right handed and they're pushing the wood through the blade and reaching over the blade to get to the wood through the other side. So I'm going to say that in general, the sliding table saw is going to be safer in that aspect. True, I could stand over here and I could push wood through the fence just like I do on this saw. And a lot of people do use a slider like a traditional North American saw. But it's not a requirement, I don't think. Um, and I'll find out. You know, I've got, I've seen videos, I have some theories in my head about that, but I'm going to say that for safety, the sliding table saw is. Uh, going to be much safer than your traditional saw. Now, I'm not going to discount the fact that the stop saw has their safety feature. 
And I've seen a lot of hot dogs sacrificed in videos to prove that. And you see a lot of testimonials. Well, I don't know about a lot. You see them every now and again on the woodworking forum saying, the stop saw saved my fingers. But I don't think I've ever run across something where someone on a sliding table saw, using it properly, injured themselves. Uh, Felder, on their high-end format four line, has just come out with, with a similar safety feature, similar to the stop saw, but um, on their saw, you just have to get near the blade. You don't have to actually contact the blade for it to uh, take effect. And it's on their format four, which I have no idea what a format four costs, but I'm it's probably 10 times what this costs. And that's for a professional shop, where people are a lot uh, less safety-minded because they're working for a business, they're not in their own home shop doing their own thing. So, uh, And the fellowship system doesn't destroy the blade, and you don't have to go get a new cartridge, you just press the button and it resets. Uh, there, there's a video, and I might link it down below, but for the home shop, or the small shop, that's really irrelevant because you're probably not going to buy that song unless you can get a second hand. We've already talked about the sliding table and how it's better generally than a sled. Um, not, it's not to say I will not make a sled for this, uh, particularly to do Kumiko work. Uh, there might be other occasions where having a little bit more flexibility on how to set stuff up on a jig is better um, than a sled than just a regular uh, sliding table, I mean. But in general, the sliding table is your replacement for a sled. Um, I will be having a video coming out hopefully shortly about uh, what they call a Fritz and Franz jig, which is probably one of the few mandatory jigs, I would say, that a sliding table has. Um, but they're relatively easy to make, and you only need to make one, maybe two. The dust collection. Um, Standard on a slider for the most part, optional over here. So if you want the same thing, you're gonna to have to add your dust collection overhead arm over here. So that brings the price of the traditional saw up some more. On your more higher end models, the dust collection is not gonna be attached to the riving knife and it's gonna be separate. So it's gonna be float a little bit more above your piece and more adjustable and have a little bit bigger hose. Um, in general, a sliding table saw will come with or a dust collection. This has uh, a five inch dust port. I will put a picture up here of, of what the dust collection on the inside of this box is like. Uh, that's not to say that the inside of this saw does not get a lot of dust. Um, but compared to my craftsman saw, which, which I will admit is a contractor saw, which pretty much had no dust collection. Uh, the dust collection is, is much better. People, I've read some reviews on the, the like the stops on stuff, they say the dust collection is really good. So, the data stack, um, on a traditional saw, you just have to go out and buy the data stack. If you're gonna get a sliding table saw and you want a data stack, at least from Felder, you're gonna have to order that at the time you place your order to have the machine manufactured because the way the, the machine is put together, you need a little bit different arbor that has a removable piece, and that's not standard, that's something you pay extra for. Um, the other thing I will say is blades can be more expensive on this. I did have to pay a premium to have a 30 millimeter arbor for my data stack. And they're also, in addition to the 30 millimeter arbor, are two pins that hold the blades in place. So that's, in some cases, going to up your cost. I will say that this um, 10 inch blade I have on here right now is a 10 euro blade. And it's uh, probably not that much, probably about the same price as a high end blade for a traditional saw. Um, and it cuts excellent. Throat space in uh, Europe, the safety regulations require that the throat space between the blade and throat space is a quarter inch 
on a traditional saw, they're usually bigger. We're going to call that a wash because most people get zero clearance inserts, including I've got one on my slider and I had one on my traditional, so there's really not that benefit plus or minus either way, other than it's probably more expensive on this one. The table size, I mean, most people are not going to buy, if they're going to go out and buy a nice traditional cabinet saw, they're not just going to get just the top. They're going to get extensions um, left and right, or just to the right. Uh, and with the uh, slider, I did get, ex I also got an extension. I mean, you could come with a smaller one that's only half as deep, but I wanted to get the full, the full extension there. And I'm not sure if that's an advantage or not. I see a lot of people who don't get it, so it might just be a personal preference. The table is a little bit deeper. This is uh, 10 inches deeper, and the blade is set a little bit further forward than it is on a traditional saw. So you're, here you're almost everything you push off falls off the back of the saw, unless you have an outfeed table, and a lot of people do that, uh, either a, a fixed table or a fold-up table or rollers, and I've talked about rollers in uh, one of my other videos. Uh, on this saw, uh, there's a lot more table, so the piece has to be a lot bigger before it falls off the end. And I did add 800 millimeter outfeed table to help support that, uh, but I also got it mainly because the shape unit is right here. So I just don't like my work that my Freshly milled work falling on the floor. So table size is somewhat comparable, but I think the layout on these are a little bit better. And then you have your sliding table, of course, which is this one's almost, this is two meters long and like 14 inches wide. So there's quite a bit of surface area and you can clamp your uh, material to it. So mobility, uh, mobility kits are add-on accessories for this and for almost all the traditional cabinet saws, you're gonna to have to pay extra for a mobility kit, so it's kind of a wash. How often do you move your saw? Probably not very often, but if you have to move it to do something, you gotta you gotta wheels because chances are once you put the saw in place, unless you have a really large shop, you're gonna to need to move your saw. There's always a need to move your saw if you're in a small shop. Now, if you're going to Take a, take a lot of uh, lumber that you get that's not already milled. And if you're going to do a lot of woodworking, you probably aren't buying your lumber from uh, Woodcraft or the big box stores. So you're going to get rough cut lumber, which may have a light edge on one side or maybe bowed. So you're going to rip that into a straight line. Uh, it may be bowed such that it's really would take a lot of passes to the joiner. So you, on this side, you just throw it up. I have a straight line ripping shoe, which you take this off and put this on the end. You wedge your piece of wood up there. I have these uh, wall clamps that work really well. Clamp the wood down and you run it through the saw. And I will, there'll be other videos that come out later that'll show me doing that. So, not something you could do on a traditional saw unless, of course, you have a sled or a taper jig. Um, but again, you're going to be somewhat limited in size, probably. Um, this is a Two meter table. I wish I had room for a two and a half meter table to give me an eight foot. And then there are also available to go all the way up to like a three meter table. And I don't see you doing that on a traditional saw. Uh, if you have a band saw, you can run it through that. Uh, a little bit awkward unless you have two people. It's probably doable with one person. I've tried it. It's not a lot of fun. It's really easy on this saw. Uh, the other thing is a track saw and. You could do that uh, if there's a little twist in the board. It's kind of dicey on that, but um, 
you know, use what you have. The, the sliding table definitely is, uh, shines on that. For cross cutting, um, again, this takes up a little bit more space if you have an outrigger. Even if you don't have an outrigger, you do have an extra long miter bar. So you have to make sure that there's typically about two meters worth of space to the left of your saw uh, that's clear of at least stuff that's not easy to move. But you can work with a very large material. Like I have, if you look at my projects video, you'll see a walnut coffee table that was made out of a five foot slab of walnut that's like 13 to 14 inches wide. Uh, I could not do anything with it on my traditional saw. There was just nothing I could do. I had to do the all the uh, miter the ends I did with my circular saw, and that took three or four tries on each end to get that done right. It was doable, it was not comfortable, uh, but there was just no way to put it on my traditional saw because one reason the blade tipped the wrong way. Tip that way, and I just by the time I tipped the blade, I didn't have enough blade height to cut through um, the two-inch piece of wood. Whereas this was a lot with a larger blade, this gives me a lot more uh, cutting depth. Again, I don't have to have a lot of sleds. You know, a couple maybe. I don't have to have a taper jig. Um, I'm going to probably be getting some parallel guides, some aftermarket parallel guides for this. Uh, to make doing tapers and long boards, long thin boards easier on this as opposed to running them across the rip fence. The sliding table saw is very, very good at handling sheet goods like plywood and MDF and that type of stuff. They're America's, they're often called panel saws, which I think is kind of confusing because typically panel saws are also those saws in Home Depot that stand almost vertical that you go and you get your uh, plywood cut down to size at the store. That's also called a panel saw. So that's kind of confusing to call both of them panel saws. But if you were to go over to Laguna, their sliding table saws are called panel saws. You can, uh, getting back to sliding tables, you can get a sliding table attachment for a lot of the saws. You can either get aftermarket third party ones or you can get uh, one supplied by the vendor. My take on that is based on a lot of the reviews is the slider is too far away from the blade. To get all the benefits that you would get having the blade right up against the sliding table. Um, that said, if you're doing sheet goods, you might be able to get away with the sliding table attachment. I will put a couple of links in the video um, below the guy who does have a uh, aftermarket sliding table that he seems to enjoy. I will also put a few uh, links to some videos below. There's one talking about traditional safety on a traditional saw, specifically about people that have to stand in front of the blade. Uh, there's a video showing kickback, uh, the sliding table accessory, like I mentioned just briefly, there's uh, also I'll put a link for a guy who's using his sliding table saw more like a traditional saw, another kickback video, and I'll also put a link to the Felder safety device. And uh, there's plenty of uh, stop saw videos. I'll throw, I'll throw a link up to one of them in there too, just so you can see a hot dog being named. You can cut really small pieces on a slider with a Fritz and Franz. Here on a traditional saw, you would need, again, you would need a sled. One of the reasons why you want the hammer is they have a pretty good size motor that still runs on single phase 220. One of the issues when you start getting into sliding table saws is a lot of them, if you get anything bigger, you start running into needing uh, three phase 220, which you can get com electronic converters that you can attach to your saw, or you can get a phase converter device. Um, but if you go look, even if you go look at the Grizzly models, if once you get it up beyond a couple levels, you're into the three phase equipment. So that is not unheard of in a traditional saw, but you're going to run across, across a lot more uh, machines that will take a 120 or a 220 single phase. Since I upgraded several outlets in my shop because a lot of my equipment is now 220, I'm even 
been uh, looking at converting my bandsaw to 220. I guess if you're gonna get some of the bigger equipment, you're gonna have to put 220 in your shop. And it really wasn't hard. I live in a townhouse, and I had electricians come out a couple of times and run me 220 lines. So again, that's a one-time upfront expense. And once you get one, you'll probably look at getting more equipment that's 220. So if you do go to getting some 220 put in your shop, I would or your garage or wherever you're doing, I would highly recommend doing a couple of 30 amp circuits. I have one 20 amp circuit and a 30 amp circuit, and I wish this had been a 30 amp, but this is the first one I got, so um, I didn't know better. So learn from my mistake. But anyway, this is a kind of a detailed comparison between a sliding table saw and a traditional saw. You know, you have to. I'm not saying that one, that you have to get a sliding table saw. A lot of people are fine with a traditional saw. It's just when I was looking at replacing my saw with a new saw, and I had actually decided to do it, I was gonna get a stop saw, a really nice one, but uh, I had seen some videos with sliders in them, and I just was intrigued by them, and I decided that that was the, the way I wanted to go. So, um, you know. You get what you need and everybody's happy with a stop saw. I'm sure I would have been really thrilled with a stop saw. But um, I just decided I really rather to have the go with the hammer. So anyway, that's all I'm gonna to cover today. Uh, I wanna thank you for watching. Uh, subscribe, like, put down comments, ask questions if you want below, and I'll see you in the next video.